Greetings, travelers. I am Misshapen Chair, spelled like the words Misshapen and Chair, as you can find in at least one version of the dictionary. Writing in video games. A phrase that seems to be thrown around more and more these days is good writing, not to be confused with well-written. I see online discourse toss this out so haphazardly to the point where I'm not sure if it means what they think it means. For many, I think good writing means whatever I like, which is fair. We like to call that the subjectivity of such matters. It's your opinion if you think something deserves the label of good writing, and you can support it with whatever you want in your Jane Schaefer essay from high school. The writing might make you feel something. You might like how everything lined up. You might like the setting. You might have thought the characters were hot. Any of that can make up good writing. Clearly, if you think about it through the lens of opinion, everyone is right. So instead, good writing must be defined by objective qualities, like correct grammar and perfectly structured plot lines. Except many stories have some kind of plot hole if you scrutinize it hard enough. And even then, is that plot hole enough to ruin the rest of the story for you? Was it a detail that the entire climax of the narrative depended on? Was it integral to your immersion? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes yes and I still don't care. Obviously the plot has to make some sense because if it didn't, it'd be nonsense. However, plot discussions ignore many aspects of writing in video games. Maybe the game was a lot more character driven or heavily focused on world building, in which case you can make a very convincing argument that the plot can slack or not exist and still be considered good writing. This topic is as broad as all of vacuous space and I don't want to make a four hour video essay today. So instead, I will focus on one thing that has rubbed me the wrong way as I waste time on the internet instead of working on my current projects. I don't care about the writing, I only care about the gameplay, a relatively common sentiment I see shared among forums and commenters. It doesn't matter what the plot is, or the characters, or the setting, or the dialogue, or the Majima Everywhere system. It only matters how the game plays. I could continue to be a pedantic asshole about this, but obviously that statement isn't absolute. Or at least I hope it isn't. I can understand that you think gameplay is by far and beyond the most important thing in a video game. I would even say that. But saying that you don't care about any of the writing in any small part would be disingenuous. You think the game designers just snap their fingers and the character's whole personality is generated out of the latest AI chatbot? Brought to life with no energy put behind the art animations or voice talents that go into it. Someone had to write down that Link grunts all the time in modern 3D Zelda, and after playing any of those games you can hear Link's questionable noises and immediately find yourself in a nostalgia way for 3D Zelda's past. Video game writing goes on the list of things that are underappreciated, like sound design. When it works, nobody will thank you, but when it sucks, they will eat you. But you got me. Not every game has a ton of personality behind its characters. If we go all the way back to the first video game of Tennis for Two, or the Magnavox Odyssey, or Atari, or arcade games like Pac-Man, those don't exactly have personified protagonists or plot lines. If you just ignore the title and all the artwork surrounding the medium. Hmm. Starting to think there might be a problem here. This is why in the semantic case of video games, I prefer Ben Yahtzee Croshaw's term of context. Every single video game has context of what you are doing. Changing the ghosts in Pac-Man to PNGs of Richard Nixon well, I'm not a crook. certainly changes the entire context of the game. Why does the Pac-Man die when he touched the Nixon? Was he part of the Watergate scandal? Maybe you don't care for extended cutscenes with lots of expository dialogue, especially ones that interrupt the gameplay you love so much. But that isn't the entire context of the game. That's only part of it. Because context is inseparable from gameplay at a certain point. Just because it isn't a direct narrative doesn't mean it wasn't written down. I think it's at the point where people making video games might not consider it writing per se, but I would argue that it is. The idea that people don't care at all about writing in video games undersells how much work goes on behind the scenes. Setting, characters, dialogue, dead or alive extreme beach volleyball. Do I really want to go to bat for dead or alive? Kinda. But not for the reason that you think. 
You want a funny example of bad writing and communities getting up in arms? Look no further than Hatsukoi 1 over 1, an Aerogay visual novel where the protagonist is so incompetent and insufferable that the company publicly apologized for how awful he was and ruining people's ability to get off. Not the weirdest thing I've seen a public apology for. Even erotica communities crave good writing. Given that many of these R18 VNs have hundreds of hours of plot and two hours of it comes as no surprise. There's a certain level of competency that's required to not ruin the whole experience. I wouldn't consider Nekopara good writing. It's obviously God writing. But at least I don't want to curse the protagonist of Kasho to hundreds of thousands of years of torture. Instead, I think he only gets obliterated by the likes of Kazami Yuji, whose presence elevates everything around him, making an entertaining character cast shine even brighter. My point being, in what many consider to be the lowest common denominator of video games, good writing makes a difference. Hell, even advanced management sims like Dwarf Fortress and RimWorld where you basically make your own story need some string in the super saturated solution for your ideas to grow. You can't have nothing at all because then you don't have a video game. Dead or Alive doesn't have good writing. It has what the bulk of video games have. Mediocre, inoffensive writing. The elevator music that simply fills the space as you get to the next set piece. The kind that isn't going to directly upset the audience, unless you're a pretentious enthusiast looking for something different. This isn't about the seriousness of the media, as my examples hopefully highlight. You don't need a serious plot or setting to show off good writing. Look at the masterful crafts of the Loathing series, West of Loathing and Shadows Over Loathing being comedy games saturated in never-ending gag after gag. Not a single opportunity was missed to keep the jokes rolling. Nudge nudge, not so subtle recommendation. Along a similar line, I don't really give a rat's ass about the serious plot of Devil May Cry, but I do like the characters and the climatic moments, which seems to be the goal. I would argue that the writing is pretty good in Devil May Cry. Five, don't ask about the other ones. Hell, I like the original Resident Evil 4's dialogue for its incredibly stupid one-liners and campiness. Something that I don't have much nostalgia for either, unless you consider four-month-old first-time experiences as nostalgic. I'm only making the version distinction because I haven't played the four make yet. I'm not trying to stoke those flames right now. I can also feel a soft smile form at the stupid quips from Chai and Hi-Fi Rush and his general incompetence, which is a sharp contrast to our aforementioned Hatsukoi boy, meaning something had to be done differently for me to like one over the other. Thank you, Shinji Mikami. I can hear you typing, slow down there, critic. Not everyone's going to agree with my correct opinions. Remember, it's the subjectivity of the matter for what I think is good writing. These games show their hand and don't shy away from what they are, which widens the bell curve, pushing some to hate it, but others to love it. I won't talk more about the general blandness of writing in AAA games. That's because the answer as to why is obvious. There's one player on the field who wants their media to be as broadly appealing, okay, and good enough as possible. And as sure as fuck is not the creative one on the team. But don't misunderstand me. Sometimes your creations are awful. Sometimes the creator has bad ideas. Sometimes the execution is just not there. But I think bad writing is a whole lot more interesting than mediocre. There's plenty of what I consider bad writing that I wholeheartedly enjoy. Like one of the many substances that's probably not good for me. Bad writing gets the gears turning. Lets you evaluate what should have been avoided or what could have been reworked. Because in many ways, failure is what defines success. Good writing requires an incomprehensible amount of bad writing first. Another unacceptable cost for the cold corporate machine. It's why I can't completely hate bad writing. Even if I mostly do. What really bothers me about the mentality of writing doesn't matter rolls back around to a certain Last of Us game, releasing the high critical acclaim and massive commercial success, bringing many people who said they only care about gameplay great joy for the first time. And after experiencing and loving that for its narrative, characters, dialogue, the reaction isn't to find more games that excel in those aspects or hope that others catch up Instead, it's to sit down and say that it's special and no other game could ever reach that pinnacle of great context. That writing will never matter in video games. And then you'll turn around and call me cynical. But as we all know, I'm just misshapen. Now let's get out there and do another run of Disco Elysium. Surely the
是。